Okay, you join me here today at the wonderful Rycroft Fisheries in Derbyshire on a very wet morning. Here today to do some filming on commercial silvers, which um, in the winter has grown massively in popularity uh, over the recent years. So just gonna go run through different feeding techniques, tips, tricks to basically help you all get some more bites throughout the winter months. It's also a cheeky little practice for me because um, the winter league starts in a couple of weeks. So um, see how we get on. Okay, so just going to run you through, um, kicking off the peg. Um, gone for two lines today, very easy, as with a lot of commercial silvers fishing in the winter it is. The simpler you keep it, the better your results generally. So today I'm going to fish a long pellet line for skimmers. Pellets are amazing for skimmers in the winter especially. So um, on here it can be really good. So I'm going to obviously feed that first. That's the line I want to start on. So I'm going to make sure I feed it first. Uh, I'll show you what with. And then I'm going to feed a short line too. That one with this time of year, I'm going to feed it with worms and casters and a little bit of ground bait, throw casters over the top. Um, and just run you through that now, basically. So I'm going to measure my feed out. Might seem a little daft, but I want to know how much I'm feeding. I want to know how much bait's in my peg. So quite important, really, to be honest. Um, so that is a medium toss pot. I'm going to put it in a little, a little pot there. I've got some 4ml expanders, you can feed 4ml expanders on here, or you can feed any expanders. And then I've got, as well, I'm going to take a small handful of ground bait. I'm going to do, start off, I'm going to do two to one. So, two parts ground bait to one part pellets, or, or almost. Um, this probably, it's probably more like 60-40 to be honest, but um, that's what I'm going to feed in that there. So what I'm going to do is out of that, I'm just going to squeeze together a small ball. I'm not even going to feed it all. So I'm just going to tuck together a small ball like that. Don't matter if it's a bit rough around the edges. It's just my initial one. And then that is what I'm going to kick my peg off with. Just that long. So I plop that in there. And then I'll come on to the short line. Which is, again, a little bit different. We've got my pole rollers set nice so I can just ship out nice and smooth. It's a bit wet today. Just got to be careful, just take your time. I've got a little dolly butt there and the end of my pole, so I know when I'm fishing, I'm smacking line with that tree. I want to feed my bait there and I want to try and keep it fairly tight. So I'm going to plop that ball in. So that'll go in, that'll start, start to break down through the water column. That's initially going to attract a few fish, hopefully. Break that down. Might need to edit that bit up. So break down, put my short, short pole there, and this is how I'm going to feed this one. So in here, I've got a mix. So I've done three 250 mil pots of ground bait. My ground bait today is um, Super Crush Expander and uh, Thatcher's Green. Quite strong fish mealy mix uh, but there's not loads of food content there and all i've added to that to that initial mix i've added 100 mil of worms because it's, it's still a little bit early on in the winter worms will pro feel will probably be quite good it's had some wet weather and stuff so worms are generally good when it's like that and then i've got um around 50 mil of casters in there too not not loads of bait and i'm not going to feed loads again either i'm just going to like kick it off i'm gonna i'm gonna leave this a little little while 
so I know where I feed it. So I've got one, I've made one ball. There's probably nearly 250 mil of bait there. And I've just put a little bit of loose, again, just for a little bit of attraction. I've got some mix left there to, to tweak and to feed. But what I'm gonna do with this line, I wanna catch, might catch some roach here as well. Um, so I'm not gonna go putting loads of bait there at the start, but again, just gonna line up with my marker, drop it in. And then what I, I tend to do a lot of the time is I'm going to be feeding cats over there. So like I try and like get my range when I first feed. So I'm just going to be dripping a few in, not loads, just sort of like get a feel for how to, to throw your bait and where to throw it. And it will help you sort of like get your arm in for later in the day. And then you can just keep feeding there. So that's that fed. Certain times I may feed more, uh, depending on the conditions. So if it's a bit colder, the fish are going to take longer to come in. So I'll probably feed a bit more bait, um, looking to hold them when they when they come into the peg. And that is the initial feeding done. That's it, sorted. Um, I've just now got to start working out how to feed it during the day. Started off, uh, like I said to you before, I was fishing pellets at the start. Good, good bait to get an instant response from. Um, just fishing a four mil on the hook and feeding like a little mix of fair uh, ground bait and micros. Um, just feeding it in like small balls at the minute keep that short line fed as like so every time I ship back and ship out to feed I'll throw some bait on my shoreline because I've got a mark on my pole I know where it is to be nice and accurate so basically what we're doing is shipping out and I'm keeping my pot like ever so slightly off the water a bit just dropping one in so like a little little ball and then I'm following it in with my rig so I've got a point four on it and it's like Probably nearly seven foot deep here. Just follow down exactly where it went. And my bites seem to use a tiny indication there. So some of them you've actually got to ignore them because these tiny, these small skimmers, they tend to give you like, they can give you, well, they can be a nightmare to be honest. Um, razzing around your bait and like blowing at it and things so what I'm trying to do is I've got my float dotted right down just trying to wait for that positive indication that was a bit more of a positive one but they seem what they seem to be doing is watching the bait coming in now the water's not overly clear it's not really clear at all to be honest it's quite murky because we've had a lot of rain so that was quite a bit better, a bit better indication. They're just sort of like getting it as it comes in on the drop. Uh, come off. Like They're being a little bit finicky, to be honest. Um, so yeah, we're just sort of putting some fish in the net. Uh, the the decent stamp, anything from like four to ten ounce, so well worth catching. Um, and what I'm trying to do really is keep them where I want to catch them. I feel like they want to be off the bottom. So I'm, I'm, what I'm thinking is, is my like as I'm as I'm fishing, I'm thinking this caster line, caster slash worm line, will probably be really good because I'm loose feeding bait there. So. It's a case of working out on any given day what, how they want to feed and on what bait they want to feed on. And some days they can be they can be happy to feed on pellets and you know you catch them like that. Other days they want to sit over like a bed of ground bait. 
other days they like a bit of loose feed. I mean, this venue in particular, Caster's a really good bait. Um, so I'm pretty confident I'll catch on it. So that, it had it on the drop. It's probably, a, might be a rud actually or something or a roach. Yeah. Could be a skim of some description. Feels a bit roachy. Hybrid, I think. So that's what's sort of like we're, tar we're actually sort of like targeting them, them size fish. A lovely weight building fish in the winter. Um, that one was up just slightly off centre of the top lip, so pretty much know he's near the deck, though they don't want to be on the deck. So this time I've just, you might have noticed, I've fed twice there but only caught one fish. So what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to go in and not feed at all, see if I can catch one. Because I don't want to keep putting lots and lots of bait through the water and then them come off the deck anyway. I've got another line shorter where I can fish for them like that. So, see what happens when I just lay my rig in and don't feed. I can always ship back, but it's worth trying these little things when you're fishing. Just hold on to it, like to like, let it drop in. That's gone straight away. But it looks like either a really small skimmer or a root. So there's obviously still a little bit of bait there, but they're kind of what you don't want to be catching on pellets especially. So, feed again this time. I mean we did have an instant bite but it wasn't off one of the target fish so it may be later I might have to change it to like to um, I might want to like loose feed expanders there perhaps and fish for them through the water. But at the beginning, I don't want to like blow my peg straight away. I just want to feel my way into it a little bit. Let's work out what's happening. I've got a good inkling that the fish are off the deck anyway. So I'm going to probably try and like start putting my bait in, but not like dropping it in from a height. I might try that. I just hold on to my rig. I can see my little, little bits pinging off my pellets and my ground bait. So I want to try and keep my float exactly on that. You can always go past, go to either side, come short. There's one just top to my right there. And it, sometimes you catch them like off and around your bait, not on it. So again, it's early days yet, but I'll be trying all them little things as the day progresses. That was a good clean bite, that one. Get another little skimmer. Really brilliant sport though this time of year. You're catching these. Lovely fishing to be honest. Right, so we've been fishing now probably, I don't know, maybe 50 minutes or so. And just, I've caught a leaf. Look at that. Um, I've just changed what I'm doing slightly because I've, I've, like, I've had like some a nice run of smallish skimmers up to like 10 ounce, but no better fish yet. Um, not come on the short line. Just want to give it a little bit of time. But I've changed, I've, I've had, I've gone like five chucks where I've just fed and eat pellets, nothing else, no ground bait. And I've definitely, 
I definitely feel like the peg's changed. And I'm just like dipping them in like that. Not really tipping them from a height. And I just feel like it's got a little bit better and I'm getting a few less silly indications. And the bites seem to be a little bit cleaner. And I've also had three sort of like proper bronzy ones, which are obviously the weight builders that you want. Seems to, I'm still getting odd like small indications where so there's obviously a lot of fish about, but it definitely seems to be better. So I just thought it was worth pointing out, just like a little feeding change. So like having to wait a little bit longer, but when you get a bite, it's a better fish. It's almost like, oh, that was a, that was one. it's almost like um, by feeding just neat pellets now, they've gone and they started to eat it properly. Like I've obviously like attracted some into my peg and it's been good, but it's about trying to find how to catch the better ones. See, that's another one there. Because they are there. They'll always be there. On a commercial, a lot of the time, they'll be in your peg more often than not. And it's just about working out how to get them on the up on any given day. definitely changed this size. it's like unbelievably different to be honest nice ones them definitely weight builders plenty of them in these lakes as well brilliant fishing it's a bit wiggly come here proper stamp ones and the, the other thing I've noticed as well which is probably worth noting is they're not hooked in the top lip either I've hooked them in the bottom lip so it's actually like they're feeding properly on the bait now so I think by making that small little change and it's worth doing you know when you're fishing you know just check, just tweaking your feeding ever so slightly. Like, don't keep doing the same thing all the time. There's always a way, usually, of how you're feeding that it's going to be better on any given day. So it's important to. So I'm just fishing a formal expander still. It's important to keep ringing them changes a little bit, and then all I'm doing is I'm getting like a little little ball of pellets like that. I'm still feeding quite a few, really, but. The thing is, at the minute, it's still quite mild. So, you can sort of be a little bit more aggressive. I know that short line's gonna be good in a bit as well, because of how they're feeding. I don't wanna like, what I was saying to Adam actually earlier, that you don't wanna be feeding too many casters on it and like have too much bait there because sometimes you bring too many roach in and the skimmers won't come and settle properly. So it's trying to find that balance between feeding enough bait to get them to come in and, but not too much that you're attracting lots of roach there. Right, um, just gonna run through rigs really, quite simple. I've got, two, well, just a couple set up, one for long, one for short. I've actually got a shallow rig as well, but I won't go into that. Um, so, this one, where I've been fishing long on my pellets, um, it's basically, I've got a 16 hook, 010, six inches of 010 on there, um, number nine shots. I've actually got the, it's a little bit different to probably how you normally shot a pellet rig, but I've, I've spaced it out a little bit more because you tend to, on this venue especially, you tend to catch a lot of fish on the drop um, or like as the bait's falling in. So I'd, I'd maybe traditionally have it over, sorry, say that sort of length. I've actually got it a little bit higher. It's probably 
45 centimetres away from a hook, my last, my last shot. All number nine, so quite positive still. Got it on uh, 014 mainline, uh, still fish fishing. Got a slim wire. Um, I like, I do like wire for pellet fishing, although I am catching some fish on a drop, I do like wire, wire for pellet fishing because I can keep it positioned exactly where I want it a lot of the time. Sometimes I'll fish carbon, but most of the time it'll be wire. I like a decent tip that I can dot right down, see the little blips that you get when you're fishing pellets. Um, you've got to be able to see your float regardless of what happens with the conditions. So I don't like fishing overly sensitive tips, with, especially with pellets and things. So um, just my preference over that. Got a couple of number eight dots above there. Um, they're just to like sort of steady the rig up. Um, and I can hang on to them, I can sink them if the, a bit of um, bit of wind comes on the water, a bit of tow. Six solid laggy in there, traditional really. Um, and then I've got a small pot on the end of my pole for feeding. That's, that's basically it for that one. Obviously my last, it runs through the full length of my top kit. Nice and soft, perfect for silvers. And then with my short one, a little bit more finesse this. Um, I've got a lighter float, but I'll run you from the hook length first. So I've got a little bit longer hook length on this. I've got a 25 centimetre hook length, an 18 hook. Um, you can actually, on this venue, you can actually use micro barb ducks in the, in the silverfish matches. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've just got um, 25 centimetre, 010. Again, 014 mainline, strung out shot. This, it's not really as tapered, this one. And I've got less shots on the line because obviously it's a lot of float, but these are actually number 10s. Um, so they're spread out sort of over the bottom third again, but a bit more spaced apart, not like getting more tapered like my pellet rig. This is for fishing through the water a bit more. Got a 0.2 uh, finesse carbon float on there. Uh, I'm fishing at a shorter distance. I'm going to be fishing through the water a lot more, fishing casters and worms and things like that. Um, I like a light float. I'll probably set a heavy one up as well, should conditions change. But for today, I've just got, I know what the conditions will be like. So just gone for a nice light float. It's got a nice, what I would call like a nice tip on it. Like it's probably, I think it's 1.5 mil this one. Um, I can dot it right down again. I can see all them little indications. I've got sort of nice white water here black my float out so that it's um so that i can see it runs up to um five elastic I, again I, I like to leave i don't know if you notice on my pellet rig but i've got a fair amount of line between my float and my uh, connector it's just so that i can flick it past should i need to i can i can go either side that sort of thing and i suppose importantly as well what i've done and when i've plumbed up i've got um where I want to fish, so where I fed my bait initially, that's this mark here. So that is just coming onto the shelf, that. Now, I've also plumbed up almost a full section past it, which gives me that mark there. That's if I feel them fish are backing off a little bit and um, they're a bit cagey on the day, I can fish further past. I know, I know my bait's going to be on the bottom because I've already plumbed it up. Um, it, it, sometimes on a hard day, it'll pick off the, the fish. I think today will be all right. But I've also plumbed it up shorter as well. So this is coming onto the shelf slightly. So it's probably about 30 centimetres. I know exactly where it is on my pole because I've, you know, I've got it marked and it's on my elbow and stuff. So I know where I'm fishing. But if I want to come up onto that shelf slightly, where more of my loose feeds drop in, or even fish off the deck, um, where I, I know I'll be off the deck, I know by how much I'll, it, it differentiates. So it's it's slightly technical, but this is what we wanted to do with this one. We, it, there's a little bit more to it than just plumbing up to one depth and saying, right, I'm gonna fish there. You've got to be able to have the scope to change things should you need to. So. I've plumbed it up a little bit shorter again 
if the fish are feeding well and aggressively, I can take that back section off, I can come shorter, I can, I can maybe, what I, I might even end up doing, if I don't feel that they want to sit in that depth of water and they want to be even higher, I can come up that shelf a little bit more and come towards me. I've got no problem doing that. I know I fed there, but there's no problem when you lose feeding, just trying to bring them back. Um, so yeah, that's it really, a little bit more in depth for the rigs and, and that, um, and uh, go back in and catch a few more. Because of what I've been catching out long, I'm pretty confident that there's going to be some fish there on this line. Little hybridy thing. Just down its throat a little bit, so it was on the drop though. That. So I'm just going to fish single caster. It's a good bait on here. Really good bait, leave the up point showing. And I'm just going to go to my mark on my pole. What I've been doing, I've been feeding a bit there, but I've not been like lathering loads and loads of bait in. I fed a couple of small balls of crown bait with some worms and casters in. I'm just going to go in on a single caster first, see what happens. If I start getting like lots of funny bites on the drop and things, then they, it's probably a few roach about. And you need to, again, it's, it's trying to get the right stamp of fish. So small skimmer. So I have two of them on two casts. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna try a little bit of worm on. Just to see. Might take me a little bit longer to get a bite, but it's a bit of a colour in the water and I f sort of feel like worms would be quite good today. So, same rig. And then if I get a bite, if I start getting an odd bite on this, I might like start to then introduce a, a like some small balls. Um, might put a pot on the end of my pole Maybe start feeding neat worm and caster. There's a few different routes I can go down. But so again, because it's a it's a new line, I'm trying it. I know what's happened out there, so I've got a, a fair understanding of how the fish are feeding but I've got to now work out what is going to be best here. It might be that the pellet line's the best and that's, um, that's just the best line on the day and that's how they want to feed. They're quite happy to feed like that. Just going to try hanging onto it. At the, might drop it in a little bit better. So you might not get a bite on worms and that'll tell me then I can probably cut it out of my top up balls because it's not really working. Well, that seemed like a better fish that. Again, slightly longer to get a bite, but I think it was, I think it was a skimmer. I've just got a feeling though, in my, like, Something's telling me I need to feed like sort of regular, similar to what I was doing on the pellet line, but obviously if I can catch them here, worms and casters, I'll catch a lot faster. Might need to cut that loose feed out. I might need to start feeding heavier. Again, like I said, there's a few different roads you can go down, but initially you've just got to try and work out what is best. Or what do you think is going to be best?
roach. See? Very lively fish today. Da, 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 da. I did bump a better fish the chuck before that, so I'm just going to see if I can get a bite. I'm going to lay my rig in a little bit different now as well. I'm just going to fish to my mark. I'm just going to lay you something to float at. Might be that I need to fish a bit heavier rig and get through some of the small fish, smaller fish. But that can be like putting your rig in like that can be a good way of doing it as well. You sort of like bypass the smaller fish that are up in the water. A few little indications. Just not sure. I don't feel what I'm doing is quite right at the moment. So to change it up a little bit. So um, back on the short line again, after yet another change, did change it to pellets. Um, caught a couple of skimmers, but again, it wasn't, wasn't really happening. Um, and normally when you make a switch with your bait and it's right, you, you'll get a really good run of the right sort of fish. Now, I think today, them fish, they just want to sit out long and they're quite happy just to sit out in the lake. Them bigger skimmers and bream, I think they're just happy to sit out there today. They're not too fussed about being long. But So just to sort of like put it into a match perspective, um, I'd probably need to rest that pellet line in a match. I wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to just keep going on it. Um, so what I'm doing now is I've come up six inch, um, so I've come, I've took my back section off, come to where I've like plumbed up onto, so I'm like on the shelf. And I've just basically potted a small ball there and I've started like throwing casters. And to be honest, I've caught, catching some nice chunky, that's a, my first skimmer doing it, but I've caught some nice chunky roach some chunky perch as well. And I think like in a, in a match situation, you need to be keeping your net taking over like as much as you possibly can. That yes, there are days when it pays to be patient and you have to sit and wait for bites, like in the depths of winter, namely, but when it's still fairly mild as it is today, you've got to keep putting something in the net because it's normally going to be quite a, a decent weight required to win. So I'm just, what I would be doing in a match situation is ex more or less exactly what I'm doing now. I want to keep my net ticking over. So instead of just trying to target like quality fish there on that line, although that looks a bit better. I think that's a perch actually. Um, what I'm actually doing is I'm just keeping something going in the net all the time. So I could have a, like a nice little run here, catch a quick pan, two pan, you know, maybe maybe a bit more with the right stamp of fish. You know, in a sort of 20 minute spell, I've rested the long line, I can go back there and then catch again on the long line. So it's, um, it's interesting, interesting to keep working between the two different things and I think today that I'm just trying to show you um, just trying to show you how to sort of like maximise and manage manage your peg 
in terms of what's available on a given day because obviously today them fish they don't want to come short so or the bigger ones don't anyway so you've got to fish for the fish uh, that do to keep keep your weight ticking over so i think i'm um, probably just going to catch one more here and then finish on that probably another billy i think Yeah, another chunky little perch. Yeah, I think we'll finish it that for today. Um, probably revisit um, some more commercial silvers again in the future. And uh, hope you like the video.